Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is now time for the finals of the JJDL Enamorous, Landerous, Thunderous, Four Nottest Divisions for the John Jr. Draft League. I am your host, as always, Thrill Shocker, the 96 Hedgehog, and I am the one and only king of the crew. So with that being said, let's go and get some hype in the comments section. We've got some big matchups here, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully we can see, see some fire prep and some fire games here. And if you guys are excited, I'm excited. But more importantly, you want to show that excitement. You want to show the hype for these JGD finalists in the finals. Hit that like button, not only for me, but for everyone that was in the finals here today. And let's go ahead and smash the like button as well. And don't forget to subscribe to join for the for the Shocker crew today. If you guys want to see me do more kind of like breakdowns and draft talk and stuff like that for JDL in the future or for other leagues or even for some parts like the UMPLD league potentially in the future, let me know in the comments section down below and I would definitely be glad to do it. I actually had a lot of fun doing these commentating things. So let me actually really sit through and just see how people were playing. Definitely seen you know, and plus doing this type of commentary stuff, I've actually really liked. And plus it helped me learn, like, okay, maybe this is how I can use these mods if I face up against these people. Or if how I can use these mods in these ways differently than I wanted. So that's really cool. So with that being said, guys, I've gotten the plugin out of the way. I've gotten all the announcements out of the way. It is time. So we're going to start from the fourth division that finished to the third division that finished to the second division that finished to finish with the best division, of course. Just because, well, for one, I think the story with one of these guys is actually a lot cool. I think it'd be deserving to get the final. So, real quick, we have first top here, the Enamorous Division, as we have the Fiendish Bliss taking on Flapple. I believe Fiendish Bliss is my, our boy Zombie, Mr. 20, Mr. 64 Leagues at one time. Uh, we have Zombie versus Flapple here in the finals. And uh, looking at finals matchups here, we have a Mimikyu, Tinkaton, Mew, Sneezer, Bisharp, Don Dozo taking on Zombies team of Fezzi Dippa 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 Jolteon, Gudra, Great Tusk, Uxi, and Meow Skarata. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let us get into the matchup here. And also if you hear cat talk, it's my cats. So I very much apologize for that. So we see a Sneezer versus the Uxi lead here. We're going to see a U-turn off on that Sneezer. Into the Mew, very interesting. We see Rocks get set up. Don't know if I would have thought Rocks would be into this matchup here. So we're going to see an Agility Mew here. My guess is this is potentially a Dragon Tail Gudra. No, it is not Dragon Tail. So we're going to see a double out here into the Don Dozo here, which is going to take the Rock damage. Is it going to go into right into a Thunderbolt, which is very interesting, especially since they just revealed it. Get massive damage off on that. We see an Avalanche here and then the Crits taking out the Gudra. Ooh, that Crit was massive. Now, do I think the crit mattered? A part of me wants to say it does because, you know, Gud I mean, Don Dozo doesn't have that great of a physical attack stat. And the Gudra was pretty much near at full. I mean, I know Avalanche doubles to about 120 when it's hit. I think the Gudra could have lived that hit still. So, I mean, if anything, if the Gudra was AV, which it looked like it most likely was, it was going to be putting itself in range to potentially knock itself out at some point against another Pokemon. But I do think that crit really does suck. But now, if anything, they forced the Don Zozo to get sacked here by the Jolteon, which I like that idea. Jolteon winning the game here. So we see a Thunderbolt here. I personally would have saw Volt Switch better because Volt Switch pivoting was great. Volt Switch covered, you know, any pivot in, especially if you went, they went hard Mimikyu for some reason. Uh, but I guess they wanted to keep the momentum here. So in comes the Sneasler here. As we are going to see the Festivity come in, which is a really good check to the Sneezer. We're going to see a Dire Claw, and God, that does so much. Now we go into the Uzi here. We're going to see a Dire Claw here do a 31%. We're going to go back out into the Tinkaton now. And based on how we are looking at that Sneezer, that thing is either Choice Scarf or Choice Banded based off of that play right there. So very much interesting to see what it does. So we're going to bring the Tinkaton on here. On a U-turn, very good U-turn play there from uh, Zombie here. And now in comes the Great Tusk. Great Tusk is pretty much free to just claim a KO. And it's going to just pick up the Tinkaton, which I definitely think was a little bit of an interesting play here from Flapple. I think Tinkaton was really good to keep around for the Miascarada, uh, for the Festipity, and even for the Uxie to agree. So I don't know if I would have just sacked that. But looking at your team, you really did not have an answer to Ground Stab. So I think that's very fair. We're going to see the Festipity come in here on the Mimikyu. It's going to be a Wiss Mimikyu, not SD. 
Very interesting right there. So we're going to see the Bisharp come in here on a play rough. And ooh, no, no Defiant. So now we're going to see the Uzi. They're most likely going to sack off the Uzi here. Just no, we see a double out into the Sneezer. And now it's a free U turn here. Now they're going for the Dire Claw, going for the damage rule. Oh, no, not damage rule. There he had it. So we're going to see, and we're going to see a Dire Claw. It is looking like a Scarf or Bandit here. We're going to see a Headlong Rush. So they're going to sack the Sneezer. I personally don't know if I would have sacked Sneezer there. I think Sneezer was still very good as it beat the Miascarada, especially if you were Scarf, which it looked like you were. It helped beat Jolteon. It helped beat this. It just needed chipped on this thing. But again, you don't have a really good switch in. I personally probably would have just sacked the Bisharp as it's not your best way to win here. I would have sacked that over the Sneezer. So let's just see what Flapple's got going on here. So the Mew is going to come in here. Is a Flamethrower is going to come in on the prediction right there. So they're going to get another Headlong Rush. And the Mew is going to go down. And it looks like Zombie is putting himself in a very phenomenal position here. Where now this Mimikyu is going to be SD. SD Wisp is very interesting here. We're going to just see how this Mimikyu is going to do here, man. And now this Mimikyu, as it sets up, what we're going to see here. And we are going to see, if we see a Drain Punch, it'll be a really interesting play. And now we see a Shadow Sneak here. We're just going to see another Sneak here. The Fez DP is going to go down. And now in comes the Jolteon or the Masquerade. Masquerade is going to come in here. We're going to see the Terra Ghost into the uh, Shadow Sneak. And we're going to see the Mimikyu drop here. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm pretty sure that Zombie basically has his game in the wraps. I don't think this... Uh, no! Wait a minute. Hold up. Hold up here. Hold up here. Hold on. Flapple might just pull off a reverse sweep here. Oh, never mind. <laughs> but Zombie is going to pick up the four, is going to pick up the 2-0 victory here against Flapple here. Congratulations to Zombie for picking up the win. He won with Jolteon, so already he was my favorite going to the matchup. Uh, just kidding, I don't play favorites, except for maybe one coach. But anyways, um, GG's to Zombie, though. He really played that game phenomenally well. I do really think that Flapple made some mistakes in this one. I think letting the Tinkercon go down was a really big misplay there. I also think letting the Sneezer go down was really big. Again, if that was Scarf Sneezer, what did it look like? Scarf CC kind of just looked like a really good ending there. Like, it looked like it didn't have that. You could have potentially almost 2 a ko would defensively on investments with that. I really think sacking Sneezer and Tink really kind of threw him off the matchup there, which is really unfortunate for... Uh, Flapple, but, you know, he was almost able to pull it back. You know, he would have had a wrist to Sucker Punch crit, probably on the Meowskarada there, but, uh, to have a shot, but at the end of the day, I think he still would have possibly won or not, especially if it's Terra Fairy Jolting on the back. If it's Terra Fairy Jolting on the back, which I'm thinking is most likely his Terra Captain, it would have been able to pick up the win there, but Jen congratulations to Zombie as he is going to move on to be the new champion of the first season of the Enamorous Division. So massive congratulations to him, to him there. Up next, we're going to go into the Landers division, where we take on the greatest underdog that ever lived, Crab, who was a previous champion from the JJDL. And we take on my boy Cam in a very hyped-up match here. As we see, my boy Cam is bringing the Rillaboom, Vikavolt, Cinderace, Godler Slowking, Ursaring and Landorus Incarnate. Uh, Lenad right in there himself. As we're going to see Crab bring the Iron Valiant, Sinistra, Iron Jugulululululus, Scizor, Toxapex, and the Rotom Wash. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this matchup here, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to see a Scizor. Okay, I don't know why that happens. And uh, we're going to see a Toxapex in on the Flamethrower here. Very interesting play there from Crab. I would have taken the opportunity that if you had a U-turn to go for the U-turn, it was free chip damage that you would have got on this thing. And plus, more than likely, you still was clicking the flamethrower there. But now we're going to see the jugglers come in here as we see a psychic. So Cam's definitely playing this game very sorry. But we're going to see a Culver Berry on this thing. As we're going to see a Thunder Wave and Paras the Jugulus. Very unfortunate. We're going to see a Hurricane on a prediction here on an Ice Beam. And you get a crit Ice Beam, which is really unfortunate for our poor friend right here. As we're going to see another Ice Beam here. And we're going to see a Will-O-Wisp. My goodness, Cam is the madman. Cam is making all these insane reads that are so, oh my god. Wow, Cam is seriously a madman to make such super hard aggressive reads. But my man is making those forward plays, especially in finals. You got to give him some respect there. As now we're going to see a Volt Switch. He's actually just choose to sack off Glow King, which I'm very interested in why he did that. 
Because Glow King was a really good Iron Valley answer. It was really good in checking the Tox effects, which you kind of had a little bit of a trouble dealing with besides Lanad. So very interested to see them just be willing to sacrifice the Slow King here. As we're going to see this thing come back. As we're going to see the Cinderace now. Sorry we're going to hear the noise here. I don't know why. And we're going to see an SD. Uh-oh. And now we're going to see Zen Headbutt. And unfortunately, we're going to see a miss. Wait. Hold up. Crab. I think Sludge Wave was banned. Wasn't it? Wasn't Sludge Wave a move that got introduced in the DLC? Um, Crab, I think you technically are using an illegal move. Unless this had Sludge Wave before the DLC dropped. Um, let's just, just see how this goes. Let's just see how this goes. We see a flinch. Into this thing. And God, that does so much. We're going to see a Powerball and it knocks out the crit. Uh, I don't think the crit mattered there. It's plus two. In comes this thing. You have to go for the... Oh, the painful bunker. Predicting the Zen Headbutt hit and get into the Toxic, which is really huge right there. We're going to go ahead and just see another Zen Headbutt. There's no reason not to just go for it. We're going to have a high jump kick for an amazing prediction right there from Cam. It's going to get rid of the Rotom. In comes the Scissor, which can now just pick this thing off with a Bullet Punch, which gets rid of the Scissor. Now in comes Ursaring. And Ursaring is going to prove to be Guts or Quick Feet, and we're going to see Guts. Guts Ursaring, which we're going to see a Fire Punch, and oh my god! That just dropped, and that tells you right there that this is a very offensive, very offensive um, Ursa because I'm pretty sure Scizor should theoretically be able to outspeed that thing. So that probably tells us that this was a slightly more defensive Scizor, and then we're seeing a more speedy this. Unless it's Quick Feet, unless it's Quick Feet, but I highly doubt it's Quick Feet if it's Guts. Quick Feet is only if you're running Toxic Orb. So this must be a Guts one with a lot of speed, so... Very interesting from Cam here, as we're going to see a high horsepower do so much damage to this thing. We're going to see an Ice Beam here, not do much, and we're going to see the Vigavolt come in on a Baneful Bunker, very interesting. As we're going to see a Thunderbolt, and down goes the Tox Effects. This is definitely looking very rough for our boy, as we're going to see an Agility here from the Vigavolt, and we're going to see our Hurricane miss, and I think that is definitely looking like game, ladies and gentlemen. As we're going to see a hurricane not knock out this and no confusion. As we're going to see the electric, we're going to see this thing switch in, which is all in a crit. Oh, God. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be game, unfortunately, for Crab. Man, that is so, so unfortunate, man. That is, oh, Oh, man, that is really, really unfortunate. Really unfortunate. But, you know, shouts to Crab for being a good sport. He knows. Because, you know, he, he just said it was all good. It's the way Pokemon goes, you know. So can we get some love and the hype for Crab for being a good sport about this? I will say I definitely think he should not have risked the Iron Valiant. Iron Valiant had a chance to potentially win that end game there. Now, obviously, if he got that Hurricane roll off there first, he would have easily had Dark Pulse there. I definitely think Cam would have been forced to Thunderbolt then if he got hit there, which meant he would have been slower than probably the plus one speed Iron Valiant, which I think is really important there. I also think Cam took a very unnecessary risk for trying to go for that double agility. Um, I think if he, I mean, he saw the opportunity to go for it, and I don't fault him for trying to go for it, but if he took that risk and got confused there, he would have had to hope his Vikavolt was well trained. Not himself, but Cam is going to pull out this first season here in the JGDL. And he's going to pull out being the champion of the Lanon division. So congratulations to my good buddy Cam for winning his championship here in the JJDL. Definitely get some hype there for Cam. He definitely really earned it. He had a very team that he much knew really lost to certain typings, but he played his team very well. This man made some insane crazy plays with his slow king right out of the gate, and it ended up really working for him there. Now, again, to Crab, I don't know if he knows this, but I think Sludge Wave was not a move we were allowed to use because Sludge Wave, I think, was a move that got introduced back to Toxapex when the DLC dropped. Now, if Sludge Wave was already on there, I'm going to say right now that I'm going to take back my comment about it. But I think regardless, I think the Sludge Wave did end up being a big factor into the matchup as it didn't pick up a kill. It did get a poison. It only was used once, and I think that was about it. So... Um, I think there was definitely no harm in foul. 
So, but that's fine now because next season all these moves are going to be allowed, so it's all right. But GG's to Cam, and we're going to go ahead and move on to our next game, which is, of course, the game that I'm really looking forward to. We are going to see everyone's favorite mod, SJ, try to win their first championship. I mean, they probably won another championship, but at least for JJDL. And we're going to see Pikatrod here go ahead and take them on. This is looking like a pretty interesting game here as we have Pikachu team being the Heatran, Urshifu, suing an Avalug Bloss Blossom. <laughs> we got Florges, Crocodile, and Neubert, whereas SJ is bringing the Kamala, Baxcalibur, Rabombi, Amoongus, Landorus, and Landorus T, and Skeleturge. Definitely looking like a very interesting matchup here. I actually think there's a decent chance that Skeleturge could just potentially win if they get rid of the Urshifu mostly. And weaken down the uh, crook to a certain degree. Otherwise, I think you have a good chance to win this here. Let's go ahead and see what the matchup is looking like here. As we see the Landorus come in, as we see a Heatran come in, so this is really cool here. Are we going to see the U turn on the aggressive play? We see they reveal to be Scarf. They're going to see the U turn here. Very good play by SJ. And they're going to reveal to be a Rocking Helmet Noivern. Very interesting play on that end right here. As now we're going to see the Avalon, his soon Avalon come in here. As we're going to see a knock. Very good knock play. Very safe play there. On the left. See a ghost onto the fairy with a body slam. Very interesting. We're gonna see a miss Stone Edge. Very unfortunate there. As we're gonna see another body slam here. And the Stone Edge is going to connect and unfortunately get a crit, which is pretty massive on this thing. As we're gonna see a wish here, and we're gonna see the recover. Which means if SJ even gets crit by this Stone Edge, they have a chance to live this here. As we're gonna see another body slam here, and that does a good chunk of life. Life. Good move there. Also, I just realized Pikachu's doing movie themes for a Disney movie theme that they like. Uh, or something like that. We're going to see a Moonblast for their names, which I actually like. Uh, we're going to see another Body Slam, and still no Paras for this Kamala, which is insane to me. We're going to see the Double Wish here, and I think we're back at the standstill. We're going to see the Heatran come in, as like, there's literally no downside to click Body Slam here. But now they get the Para on the Heatran, which is pretty big on the Heatran. Heatran now being kind of weakened down is really good. And now we're going to see the Baxcalibur come in on the Florges. And that's very unfortunate because now it's free setup there or free attack there. And we're going to see a free attack here on the Skeleturge. And now in comes the Noivern. And very much interesting. We're going to see a Noivern pivot in here on a Shadow Ball here. Very safe Shadow Ball there. So we're going to see a Draco here. And that does absolutely nothing. This is a very defensive Skeleturge. As we're going to see a Torch Song here. Now are we going to see the Slack Off? Are we going to see the Shadow Ball play here? We are going to see a Slack Off here. As we are going to head now and switch out into the Rabombi, which Rabombi can kind of just almost win this game right now. Which is, we're going to see Scarf Rabombi. Very interesting. We're going to see, and now we see the Sticky Webs. And this is where it's going to get interesting. Now we see Stealth Rocks, which don't matter too much. We're probably going to see an Earth Power or a Torch Song here. Now we're going to see a Shadow Ball, very safe Shadow Ball here. Into the Defense Drop. We're going to see a Protect here, as we're going to see a Torch Song. And now it looks like SJ is going to be forced into a big win of predicament. No, they're going, to, they're going to go for the... And that is very spadep. Holy heck. We're going to see that. And we're going to see another Torch Song here. There's no reason not to. And it is going to do so much damage to the Crocodile. We're still going to see him plus two. And we are definitely going to make the save play and not risk that as we are going to go into the Crook here. As into the Moongus. We're going to see a knockoff on the Rocky Helmet. Which is really hit. Now we're going to see Heatran come in here on a potentially a Spore. Which, no, we see the double into the Landorus, which is very interesting here. Now it's going to put SJ in a very predictable situation here to make the prediction here. And they are going to make the Sludge Bomb play. Very safe, neutral play here. They're going to actually make the double into... And no, unfortunately, they double wrong into the Roost here. As we're going to probably now just see it just again on the boss. And we're going to see a Wish here. We're going to see a Dragon Tail. Very interesting Dragon Tail play here. From the Pikachu here. As we're going to see a Stone Edge. And unfortunately miss. And we're going to see a Draco. Which is going to be able to knock out the Landers. Which is massive. That was a really, really unfortunate spot right there. As now we're going to see a Shadow Ball. Under the Dragon Tail. Into this. And we're going to see the Rabobi come in. Which is really unfortunate now. Because now Heatran kind of comes in. And now we see a Switcheroo. Which now means Safety Goggles is now on the Rabombi. That Heatran is no longer safe from Amoongus. Now we're going to see a Torch Song here, get that special attack raise, and now we're going to see a Wish, and unfortunately, this Crocodile is going to live this hit now, which is very unfortunate. We're going to see a Shadow Ball on an over-prediction there from SJ, and uh, SJ is definitely looking very to be much in a top spot right now. So we're going to see an Earthquake do 33% here, as in comes the Heat Trend once again on this Amoongus. We're going to see a Giga Drain here, which is obviously not going to do much. 
And uh, this is looking really rough for SJ right now as they're going to get the double into the Rapid Strike Urshifu. And this is looking very bad because now it's pretty much a free pick. Potential switch here, but they're going to go for the Ice Spinner, making the easy read and get a critical hit, which is massive. And they're definitely forced to sack off the Kamala here, as there's no choice in doing that. This is basically defensive Kamala, which looks like to be it's really good. And we're going to see a fling! Oh, the fling big nugget! The fling big nugget! Oh, man, that is so rough to see. And with that, the spin blocker is gone. If it, now Webs can get spun from Pikachu. I think Pikachu kind of just singly takes the win here. And now the Rabombi is going to come out here. And unfortunately, and now we're going to see a double out here into the this, into the Heatran. So now basically Rabombi is now dead. As we're going to see the Skeletrids come in here on the Crocodile pivot. And this is definitely looking like it's about over for... Uh, SJ, but SJ's not going to go down without a fight. SJ is going to fight tooth and nail to the end here, as now we're going to probably see a dragon dance here, as I think it's the only best shot that SJ is. Well, we're going to see a swords dance here, and we're going to see another swords dance into the body press, which is a crit into the chopple berry. Oh my god. And uh, wow, that is basically going to be GG's. I don't think there's anything SJ can do here now. And that is just really unfortunate, man. That is just really unfortunate. That's a crit. And another crit, man. Wow. It's just... It's 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 over. There's nothing SJ can do. And, uh, yeah, that's unfortunately, man. Unfortunately, the end of SJ there. Uh, you know, SJ has nothing to be disappointed about. They had an amazing season. They really played really well. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things where it just happens, man. You know, it's one of those things that you can't control with hacks and RNG and how people play. It's, uh, it's really tough. You know, it's really tough to see stuff like that happen. So we're going to see a wish into the sludge bomb. They are going to at least get rid of the floor just so it's not a six L. So congrats for that. But now they have nothing to hit this thing. They're going to get a free wish on this thing. And now there's going to be a free Todd. And now this thing's back to healthy. Good news is I can kind of almost click this uh, with no drawback move here. So we're going to see now a Earth Power into this thing. Now we can either see a Torch Song. We are going to see a Torch Song here. As I'm going to sack the Elvalug here. So now there's a decent chance that the Skeletor can potentially win, but it's going to be really be dependent here. Are we going to see the aggressive Shadow Ball or Torch Song here? No, we don't. We see the Amoongus. And we're going to see an Air Slash here. And we're going to see the Spore. Now there's actually a shot here. There's a shot here that SJ could actually maybe almost pull it back here. SJ needs a good roll in the sludge bomb. She gets a sludge bomb. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. There could be a chance, ladies and gentlemen. There's a chance. There is a freaking chance right now. SJ has to really play this smart here. If SJ plays this really smart here, they have a chance to win here. Hold up. Everyone thought SJ was done for. Everyone thought SJ was done for. Even yours truly. Can SJ pull it back? Can SJ pull it back? We see the Giga Drain. Oh man, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to see a Synthesis on the Earth Power. SJ with the read. And now we're going to go back into the Skeletor here. And there's a Para. And now this is looking very bad right here. So we're going to see either an Earth Power or a Torch Song or potentially a Shadow. We're seeing a Torch Spawn and a Crit back, which is really justice right there. And no, we're going to see the Swap Out of here again, which is very safe on their end here. So I'm going to go for the Earthquake here. And again, the heat drink can potentially come here, but if SJ is going to make the prediction of her life there, no, they're not. And now back into the Skeletor. They go. They have to make an aggressive crook play here, but they can't. And now there's a free Earth Power or Slack off here going into the future. Now they might have to play potentially for the crits or for the Paras here. And if I'm SJ, I'd probably go for the offense here. Just because it looks like they have a hard time breaking your Amoongus here. And there's the Para. And unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, that Cars is now going to go down. SJ might just been, have been able to pull off that upset here, ladies and gentlemen, because now the crook goes off Earthquake, and it's not going to kill! And we're going to see the Torch Song come off and knock out the Crocodile, and now in comes this Urshifu, and now they're going to sack the Skeletor. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, this is down to the wire. And no! They oh, okay, that was a little mean. I'm not going to lie. That was a little mean. But I, I know why. But congratulations to SJ! Holy crud, ladies and gentlemen. SJ just pulled off 
the most insane comeback ever seen from my perspective. SJ, you know what? I'm going to literally stand up from my bed. I'm going to give you a round of applause, SJ. Holy crud. With basically two to three Pokemon. No, essentially two Pokemon. You 2v5. And a 2v6. That team. Holy shoot. But no disrespects to Pikachrod. Obviously, they played phenomenal. They were really in the driver's seat positioning, even playing around those webs. It really sucked. They could never get that spinoff. If they got that spinoff, it pretty much was GG at that point. Guaranteed. But holy crud, SJ, you amazing, amazing talent individual. I would love to play you in a really great game next season if I have the opportunity to. You seriously did well. You made such an amazing comeback, basically off the back of Dirge and Amoongus, essentially. Insane, insane, insane. I can't speak enough of that, man. Holy crud, what a game. What a game from both of these amazing players to give us an amazing finals for the Thunderish Division. Heck, if this next game is not as good, this is getting game of the week, and I might give the thumbnail to Amoongus. Or Skeletor, one of the two. They deserved it after this work for SJ, man. Wow, what a game. Congratulations to both, and again, another major congratulations to SJ, your Thunderous Champion. And with that being said, we now head off to the Tornadus Division, the best division, my division, that I was a part of. And we have Alphon, who made the upset history-making move of making it to the seventh seed as he takes on Chef, who I think finished in the top four. And we're going to have now seeing if Ephon can finish the story and walk away with the championship of the Tornadus division. Or Chef will cook his way into a championship throne room. With that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's go ahead and get into this match. As we're going to see the Great Tusk lead into the Toxtricity. And I didn't even read out the teams. My bad. So we have on Alphon's team the Toxtricity, the Hisuian Samurai, Dragonfold, Leafeon, Talonflame and Iron Shreds. That is definitely most likely the Terra Captain being the Leafeon. We see, I believe, as a Terra Tauros, if I remember correctly. But we see the Great Tusk, King Gambit, Spectre, Tauros, Zapdos, and Milo getting into it. So we're going to see a rapid spin right off the gate. Very interesting to see that right there. As Zapdos is going to swap out, we're going to see a Synthesis. Very, very unfortunate to waste the Synthesis on that turn. We're going to see the Iron Shreds coming on a U turn here. In comes the Great Tusk once again to do whatever he wants to do. Leafeon's going to come back in. It might be a predictable play. We're going to see another spin. Very interesting to see another spin here as Zapdos is going to come back in. And now we see the Toxtricity. Very good play right there. And now we're going to see potentially a Boom Burst, an Overdrive. We're going to see an Overdrive make a very aggressive play, even with the Tusk back there. As now we're going to Town Talonflame and potentially have a Sucker Punch. But now we're going to see it on a potential Great Tusk pivot now into the Zapdos. We're going to see a U-turn. We see the static. No static. Into the Toxtricity. Now Toxin can almost just click Boom Burst for free here. There's no real reason not to. Unless they want to make another Overdrive play. They are going to make the safe Boom Burst play this time around. And in comes Hisuian Samurai on the Draining Kiss. And oh my god. That does so much. In comes the Zapdos here. We're going to see an Aqua Cutter here. No Paralyzation. I was going to see another Aqua Cutter. And it is enough to knock out the Zapdos. Which tells me this is potentially Scarfed on this Hisuian Samurai. We're going to see... The great touch, the uh, iron treads come in here, and we're gonna see Spectre. We're gonna see the Spectre, and we're gonna actually see them sack the King Game. Oh no, they're not. They got the boat. They get the luck of not seeing that thing sack, and we're gonna see. Wow, an aggressive swap out here into the Great Tusk. As we're gonna see the Talon Flame into the Spectre come here. Very interesting play here. So we're gonna see a Shadow Ball here. That is very much, very much damage. We're gonna see a U turn here now, back into some Zarin, which confirms that this thing is potentially scarfed. We're going to now see the spec this thing come back out here. We're going to see a flip turn, which is just enough to knock out the King Gamut. It's definitely looking very hard for Chef right now, as Spectre is going to come in here on this Sil on this Leafeon, which is going to take this hit. We're going to see a Leaf Blade and do a lot of damage here. And now we are going to see the Leafeon go down, as Spectre is now in. And in comes the Pult, and this is where things are looking bad, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to see a Dragon Dart, so it's either physical or mixed on this Pult. We're going to see fit another one. Are they predicting the Ice Beam or the Flipter? Oh, they make the aggressive Flipter play. Oh, into the Tauros, which is Intimidate Tauros. So slightly defensive Tauros. We're going to see in the Iron Treads pivot here. We're going to see a Terra 
Barry into the Trailblaze. Uh-oh. That's not looking good. Oh, I think this might have been this might have been Life Orb Sheer Force, I think. And we're going to see an Earthquake right back. Very interesting to see an Earthquake right back here instead of the Iron Head. They must have not had it. We're going to sack Treads, which probably didn't need. Here comes the Talonflame here. As we're going to see a Raging Bull, which I did not even know Regular Toros got that. I'm going to be honest with you guys. In comes the Colt. Doubling out into the Toxtricity. As we're going to see a Terra Blast. And uh, this is actually looking really bad for Chef, right? This is actually looking really bad for Alphon here. As he is now in a position where he had to sack off everything. Now, if he is Scarfed, on his Sasuian Samurai, he has a chance here to win this match. As we're going to see a flip turn into the pole, which now gets to click Dragon Darts or Shadow Ball for free here. We are going to see the darts from this thing. So down goes the Milotic. In comes Great Tusk here. We see whips, and he provides. He's not. We're going to see a headlong rush, and it is going to knock out this thing. Now, depending on the investment, this Sasuian Samurai could potentially win the game. They're going to sack the Spectre, which is a big... Oh, I guess it makes sense. It comes down to this turn. And... It's over! Holy shoot! What an insane finale! Holy shoot! And it just confirmed that they were scarred face off my prediction. What a game! Holy shoot! What a game! Holy moly, dude. What a game from Alphon. Having to really play around that very carefully. Wow. GG's to Alphon. Yo, this dude, uh, he was really worried that he was not going to make playoffs when he had lost to me, I think, in the second last week of the regular season. But he pulled off the impossible 6-0 that he needed to win the game. He then wins his first two playoff matches, and he pulls off the chance to be able to come back and win the finals off of the back. And the Choice Scarf Susanian Samurai story continues. It started with Mephesto. It's finishing with Alphon. But it will start up again one day. We already know that will happen. But that's besides the point. Um, definitely think SJ's match of the week, match of the match of the finals. I'm sorry. This is another close second. And third probably being honestly zombie versus uh Flapple. And then fourth being Cameron versus Crab, just because that game looked like that was really in Cam's favor the whole way, and Crab didn't get a chance. So that's the only one I would say is the weakest one. But this one was definitely the second best game of the finals. Alphon had a really play after that Torrells. I think I don't really remember if Chef was supposed to be. Oh, I think Chef had to have been intimate because he knows that if he was a sheer force, he would not have gotten the speed boost. Oh, I think per Chef, I if I were you, man, I probably would have went expert. For life orb that would have made sure if you were probably expert belt instead of life orb you probably won this match 100 percent hands down but you know what that's one of the things with prep man you once it's finalized you get into the game you'll reflect on it you know it's one of those things that you know if you make that mistake you know what you just come back stronger you now know what to do next time you face off against an opponent like this especially with your team but you know what chef played phenomenal he had a really insanely good run he had some really good matches and Alphon, he finished the story from being the seventh seed off of a back of a miracle win he got and now has become the champion. So once again, I want to give a massive shout outs to all of our finalists. To Pikatrod, to Flapple, to Crab, to Chef, and to our champions being Cameron, Zombie, Alphon and SJ. Major congratulations to all eight of you. You made it to the finals. You all deserved it. You gave us some amazing matches for the finals that lived up to the hype. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the JJDL season. I know my buddy, if I my buddy had John here, was here to say, he said he'd be so thankful and grateful to everyone that contributes to the community of the John Juniors. Even though we he hasn't really when things we have snom tears and stuff like that, but snom he hasn't shown any love to snom in so long. But anyways, I know my boy John here, he'd be very thankful to every single person in the community of this of his server because without that server, you know these community leagues don't happen. He doesn't get to make all these new and awesome connections with all these amazing people, and you know he doesn't have to get the chance to meet and be able to part and play with some amazing talent out there. So I would definitely say on behalf of John and the rest of everyone else, and including myself. 
Thank you all so much for being a part of the JGDL and definitely look forward to next season. Don't probably expect John to drop apps right away. John definitely wants to take the time to probably at least play in the BBR, which is coming up, which definitely go grab your BBR rules for John. Show the support for the team Portland Nightshaders out there. Probably expect John to maybe drop some apps here eventually, but I wouldn't make no promises on that. John wants to first off make sure he's got enough staff and more importantly that he will have enough time to put in the investment for. And plus needs to figure out what he's going to do in terms of how many players he wants to bring back in the next seasons. So with that being said, on behalf of John and everyone, thank you guys so much for watching the JJDL. Thank you guys so much for watching the finals. And with that, our last bit of the farewell for now. But until next time, I'm Phil Shock and Nice to I'll see you all in the next season. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Hey!